How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Witches Night Out. This is from 1978, directed by John Leach and stars Gilda Radnett. And overall, this really is kind of like a cult classic children's cartoon. Uh, this came out in 78, and uh, quite unfortunately, didn't get terribly much play. Uh, the kids uh, really did like it, though, and those who had managed to record it onto VHS watched it over and over again. Sadly, the official VHS, from what I gather, only came out once and got to be kind of rare. And for a long time, this was rare media. Luckily, nowadays, we have it on DVD pretty readily accessible. But I remember I was looking through the YouTube comments on videos about this, and a lot of people were saying that they remembered this from their childhood and had been looking for it for a long, long time, or even some people saying, I remember this from my childhood, I can't believe this was actually a real thing. But yeah, this definitely made an impact on a lot of people, and a lot of people really liked it, and it's a shame that this doesn't get talked about as much as other Halloween specials like The Great Pumpkin. It's really good, and of course the thing that most people remember is the fun little character animations done in bright, solid colors, really giving this a 70s feel. Actually, 78, that's the same year John Carpenter's Halloween came out. I guess the late 70s was a, a really fun time to celebrate Halloween, huh? Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk a bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this is about. But yeah, let's analyze the plot a bit, but I'm not going to spoil the ending. Anyway, we open up and it is Halloween night, and we meet two kids named Tender and Small. Yeah, in this universe, everybody is named based on one adjective about, you know, who they are, you know. So we get tender and small, and then we get adults like goodly and nicely, and then bad adults like malicious and rotten. They all have character-specific trait names. So tender and small are these two nice young kids, and they're going Halloween trick-or-treating with these masks they got on, a ghost mask and a werewolf mask. But they're upset because even though they have masks on, all the adults recognize them and none of the adults think that they're scary. You know, they want to be scary and instead everybody thinks they're just cute little kids and that makes them upset. And yeah, you can really see whoever wrote this really new kid logic. I put on a mask, I'm scary now. No, no you're, you're not, kid. So yeah, really relatable there. Uh, but the adults start to talk about Halloween as well. And some of the adults are jaded. They think it's silly. Ah, uh, what's up with these kids dressing up in costumes? It's stuff like that. But others of them, uh, in particular Goodly, who's kind of the leader, the, you know, noble adult character, he says, what if we could give Halloween deeper meaning? I'm going to organize my own Halloween party, and it will be well thought out, and organized and this will be the perfect Halloween party for adults and we get to see some of the the movies criticism come into play here more on this in a little bit though they decide to throw their Halloween party in a seemingly abandoned haunted house however it's not really abandoned a witch lives there a witch that is kind of out of her heyday you see no one comes to her wanting spells anymore, and she just kind of sits in her room, not doing anything, and she's really, really depressed. Well, cut back to the kids, and the kids are with their babysitter, Bazooey. Yeah, everybody has a nickname describing who they are, and then we get Bazooey. I guess he's supposed to be kind of the wackier character. Luckily, it doesn't go too extreme and annoying, but he is kind of like, hey, I'm your goofy babysitter, you know, the guy that, you know, he's still grown up and mature, but he is good with kids, you know? So he's babysitting them, 
and the kids voiced their frustration about Halloween, and they wish that they had a fairy godmother that could make them into real monsters. Well, the witch hears this and goes to see them and says, I'm your fairy godmother, so she's taking on that persona, and I can turn you temporarily into real monsters. So the one girl is now a ghost, the kid is a werewolf, and Bazooie becomes a big Frankenstein's monster, which I think they actually do say Frankenstein's monster, not Frankenstein. So all you monster nerds out there who that bugs, they noticed it this time around. Uh, anyway, the witch takes them all to terrorize the party, and when the adults scream and run away, they of course start to think maybe being scary isn't all it's cracked up to be, but in the commotion of the party, the witch loses her magic wand and now cannot turn them back, and that's the conflict going into the rest of the story. And I guess first of the specifics we have to mention is obviously the style. This is what a lot of people remember for this movie, uh, the one color per character style. So every character will have its own color. It'll be a different uh, shade, you know, so like the kid is like an orange and the the sister is like a yellow and Bazooey is like a red and they'll all be different colors. And now this may have just been to be cheap, I'm not sure. I can see why it would be a cost-saving measure not having to do all this detail color work. And I think that if this had caught on and become a thing and like everyone was doing it, we would recognize it as cheap animation. But because we just did it this one time, it really gives it a unique feel and it becomes very, very iconic for this animation. And, you know, you kind of wonder, they're one color and their heads, like when they have hair, it kind of blends in to the shape of their head. Probably an inspiration for The Simpsons, I, I don't know. Uh, but they're very interesting, and when they uh, stand against the backgrounds, because the backgrounds are all very, you know, painted backgrounds, and then you get a character that's one bright color, it really pops out against the background. A really good... Uh, I don't know if it was intended, but a really good added benefit for the style. And also, when you're dealing with characters that will transform between multiple versions of themselves, the fact that they're still the same color really helps you keep track of who's who. So that is another benefit of the style. But overall, really, really eye-catching and memorable. It's one of the things that people talk about the most when they refer to this animation the one with the bright and colorful characters. But also, when I hinted at this earlier, uh, the criticism of adults, and you know, there is, everybody learns a lesson here, but it's actually pretty rare to criticize how, you know, adults can get stuffy as they grow up, you know? You get the, the mean adults who just don't want to do anything for Halloween, they just hate the holiday, and they've forgotten how to have fun. But even the adults that try to embrace the holiday, they still forgot how to have fun, you know, because they're like, how can we do this in a neat and orderly way? How can we give deeper meaning to it? And this says, maybe the kids are right. Maybe you just need to go out there and have fun. Don't think so hard. Don't be so critical. It's Halloween. Just go out there and be yourself and do what you want to do. And it really is a good idea. It's not, you know, really putting adults down, but it is a reminder that, hey, it, it don't get so caught up in yourself, you know? And that leans into the theming. This is Halloween, and it actually has a really strong Halloween theme. I I've seen a few Halloween movies where Halloween barely comes up, or it goes on its own direction and it gets, you know, caught up in its own mythology. But here, this is an animated special that is first and foremost about Halloween, and they really get the spirit of the holiday down. This is a day where you can go out and be whatever you want. You can be experimental. You can decide, hey, today 
I want to be a vampire that's different than who I normally am. And yeah, it's not a sustainable lifestyle, but for Halloween, we can do it this one day. And that is kind of where the kids and the adults kind of learn to meet in the middle. The kids will learn, you know, that we can't always be scary monsters, but the adults will learn that you can take a break from being an adult at least once a year and go out and have fun, you know? So I really do like the themes and the ideas in here. And also, a lot of people talk about the witch. She is a really interesting character. She gets a few good jokes in, well, I'm not the Avon lady. And she's animated a little different. She's primarily black, uh, but her face is... Uh, drawn out in a lot more detail, so she's clearly just wearing dark witch's clothes, but her face has a bunch more line work, and it makes it really expressive, and it makes her different than all the other characters, and yeah, she's a real interesting character, you know, uh, sort of, I guess, kind of representing the holiday itself, having been shoved into its place, but learning to come out and enjoy itself too, you know, which I think is very interesting. We get a bunch of funny jokes and silly animations for the kids, and we do get some voice acting that's kind of mumbly cartoon voice acting. Wow, what are you doing? You know, stuff like that. But overall, really a fun, silly little special with an interesting and very uh, thematically appropriate idea at its heart. And I think that, you know, all these things really did come together that made it stick in a ton of people's heads. Like I said, this didn't get played enough or get a wide enough release to be the Halloween classic that it should have been. You know, this really should be up there with Great Pumpkin. And it definitely needs more people talking about it, sharing it. It's one of those that's a half hour time block, so it's pretty short. And I would definitely recommend popping it in, checking it out. A good bit of 70s nostalgia and a really good quick thing to get you into the Halloween mood. Uh, really, really fun. And I am glad. What is this? Mill Creek? Uh, thanks for putting it out on DVD. We really really did need that. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Halloween playlist. If you want to see me talk about a bunch of other Halloween movies, you can find those there. I talked about Trick or Treat. I talked about the Halloween franchise. I've done most of those. Um, I also talked about the house's October build, so a bunch of cool stuff in there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Halloween playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.